What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat and we are here at the Nerd Castle with the first episode of A Wizard's Lizard, that's right. I have nothing going on in my docket right now, this has been like a really, really slow summer for game releases. And this game landed on my desk the other day, and I thought to myself, you know what, it looks like an intriguing title. I know that I've gotten emailed about it before, I think I've been on a press list or something like that for it. And it looked like it was kind of a mix between a binding of, like, the binding of Isaac and maybe Rogue Legacy, where... The Binding of Isaac, for example, is just a roguelike slash roguelite, whatever you want to call it, but there's no persistency in between plays, aside from the characters. Well, A Wizard's Lizard borrows some of the things from, like, Rogue Legacy, where you upgrade over time to make your job a little bit easier as you play the game. And while I do think that this eliminates a little bit of the replayability of the game, I think that for your first and second playthroughs, it makes the game a lot more fun, because the deaths are a little bit less harsh. And so if you're one of those people that absolutely loathes permadeath, this is probably going to be a game that intrigues you. The game is very very polished as it stands right now I know that it says version 2.05 but the version that I have through Steam says it's a beta so I, I think the game just had its final release but don't quote me on that you may want to do a little bit of research I'll put it down in the information below so without further ado I don't like to talk too much at the beginning of every series so we'll go ahead and let's play with a wizard's lizard there we go I had to get the joke in there somewhere and you get to pick your character. I haven't unlocked anybody. This is very much sort of a blind playthrough. I just wanted to play the game with you guys. I am going to put a disclaimer up here, like right up front. I've never played this game before, so I'm probably going to be incredibly bad at it. Therefore, there's going to be no call for anybody to be like, Oh my god, he's so terrible at the game! Because I, I gave you a disclaimer at the beginning. So there you go. The buck has been passed forth to you, noble viewer, to do with as you please. I suggest a Diet Coke, but you know, whatever you want to do with it. And so, I'm using a controller for this because I hate playing games like this without... Ooh, we've actually got our own little fluffy bed right there. With Raga, our name. I like it if you said our name backwards, it's Agar. Which sounds way more badass. I'm gonna refer to Raga as Agar from now on. But this is our adorable little Triceratops monster. If there's one thing I've learned about life, it's that being adorable definitely has its payoffs. I mean, that's the only reason that cats are allowed to continue to exist. So, you know, they're adorable. You have to wonder if they were a lot uglier, if anybody would like them quite as much. Ah, Raga, you're just in time, my friend. He talks to his pets, just like I do. I'm about to finish this magic potion. It'll protect us from death. Baha! We've done it! With this magic potion, we've mastered death! So, you dare lay claim over my domain? Death! You no longer have any power over us. Silence! Death is far from the worst thing that can happen to you, mortal. Come to my crypt and I will show you my meaning. That was actually kind of a pleasant request. Oh, never mind, he took him with him. I was gonna say, like, you know what? First come over to my house and then I'll show you what I mean. Right now, my teleportation's on the fritz. It's not quite working correctly. I'm gonna need you to do a little bit of legwork here in order for my vengeance to work properly. In which case, I'd be like, mm -mm, I'm staying in the house. I'm playing Sega Dreamcast. You can go do whatever it is that you want to do. And so we've gotten a couple items right here. And there's some things that you're probably going to well, It's saying them on the screen right now. So the right stick lets us throw a sword, like so. Just in case you wanted to destroy stuff. That's right, apparently our lizard has the amazing ability to grow thumbs. Or at least is good at gripping things enough to throw them. If we press the B button, we've got this little dash right here. There it is. Allows you to get away from threats a little bit better. I'm not going to press Y because that's our soul blast. Which we have a limited quantity of at the top left hand corner of the screen you'll see that it has a skull with times four it's basically just this aoe that kills everything around you and then if you press the x button you drop a totem which basically farts these little flame skulls all over the place essentially it farts out these little things that make it appear as though it ate a ton of beans and then listened to a bunch of mega death or something what do you want raga hello little one what happened to your master the wizard oh no wait you want to save him well all right he'll be at death's crypt it's dangerous to well just take my stuff so he took his stuff already. I'm not going to talk to a lot of the townsfolk. Essentially, this is the museum lobby. And this game, this part could be a little bit confusing. You just go back through the door you came through. But each of these, I've seen these in other games. For example, like Pixel Boy. Where it's essentially just a museum slash library that tells you where every, like what everything is that you fought so far. So it'll have all the weapons archived here. It'll have all the monsters that you've killed archived here. And as you can tell, there's a pretty sizable armory of items that you can pick up randomly along the way. And so I don't know if we're going to be able to equip these while we've been playing the game. Like, let's say we can walk in here and be like, oh, I want this one, and then we can leave. I don't think it works like that. At the top left-hand corner, you also see a green heart right there. I'm glad that they decided to buck the trend of making it a red heart. The green heart makes me happy. I don't know why. The green heart feels like something you would earn for doing something awesome and valorous in combat. And so we've got 50 HP. Down below that, you'll see the little golden... 
Oh, I don't know, the little golden oval or the golden ellipse that denotes that we have ourselves some gold, or in this case, no gold. We are broke as a joke. In the interest of showing you guys as much of the game as I can in this first episode, we're just going to start out. We got 500 gold to start out with with that little gold chest. What does this guy want? Several of the town folk went back to the cemetery to rescue the wizard. I fear they may not come back. Please, go after them. To start your journey, head east into the cemetery, but be careful, Raga. Alright, and so to the right is going to be our cemetery. Let's have a look around here and see if I can get a feel for the layout. Down takes us to the marketplace. And so if we have a little bit of extra gold, it appears as though we can start out with better items if we were so inclined. What is this guy with the headband? Welcome to my humble store. We have 3 out of 63 blueprints in stock. Visit my cousin Borayu in the dungeons to buy more blueprints. Apparently Borayu, or Boriu, however you want to say it, depending on your enunciation, is a bit more brave than his ginger friend, or his ginger brother who's hanging out in the middle of town. He decided to ply his wares out in the dungeon, which by all extents probably means that they're incredibly expensive. What's off to the left over here? Let's find out. Off to the left, we've got ourselves... what in the hell? What is this? It's like a little gemstone door. This shortcut leads to the sewer, but the way is blocked by mysterious green crystals. Okay, well I could have seen as much, and I assume they're gonna say the same thing over here, that that way is blocked by mysterious red crystals, and so I guess we're probably going to gain access to those somehow later on anyways. I don't know what the tavern does for me. Do you have anything to say? Welcome to the tavern! Many of my regulars are lost in the dungeons. Okay. And so over time what's going to happen is, oh, we can sleep on the rug like an adorable, oh my god, look at him. You just want to pet him, unless it's a she, and then you want to pet her. You can never tell. Have you guys seen that picture on the internet? Or there's a video on the internet right now of this guy's pet iguana that runs up to him and he has it voice trained. It's pretty adorable, although the iguana looks kind of aggressive, like it goes Rrr! and it makes like this creepy noise that really seems like the sort of thing a dinosaur would say before it bites your face off. I don't know. Let's go into the dungeon, we'll see what's going on here. We must defeat death. That seems like it would be leaving a rather large plot in the natural hierarchy, in all honesty. If we get rid of death, then what happens? Oh, well, never mind. Let's not get too philosophical about this. It's video games, and so we've got ourselves another thousand gold. Disappointing that we couldn't find that up in the town, because that would have meant that we could have bought ourselves some extra equipment. And it looks like we've got cursed town folk in here. I'm going to do my best to stay the hell away from them. But this game does a pretty good job. So as you can see, it's basically, it turns into a bullet hell shooter over time. That's very, very similar to what you would see in the Binding of Isaac. You're going to be dodging projectiles. You're going to be finding new items and all that sort of fun stuff. But where it borrows, as I said before, is from games like Rogue Legacy. Where when you die, you get to keep gold. You get to find items that are persistent that make you stronger for your next run. And so you should see some amount of improvement as you play the game, unlike with me playing Binding of Isaac, I'm just terrible at it no matter what I do. I'm going to drop a totem right there, although you do want to be aware that if you drop a totem, there is a slight delay when you drop a totem, and I'm pretty excited today. I don't know if you guys know why I brought up a Sega Dreamcast, but it's because I got a Sega Dreamcast today, and that is the coolest thing ever, and so I can't wait to sit down and play it for a little while. I don't have like HD PVRs or anything like that, so I'm probably not going to record anything with the Sega Dreamcast, but I am quite, what is this? The blue candle. We can go to our inventory over here. C increases your soul power, modifies your personal lighting, and is equipped to light hook. Okay, I don't know exactly what that means, but we'll figure it out. I don't think there's anything... I think it just... Our light radius looks a bit more bluey right now. A bluey seems like something you would do when you sneeze, but... In this case, I'm going to use it as the adjective that describes what's going on. I'm going to see... I don't really like being cornered up like this. You don't have to worry about those little ghosts right there. These little pale guys, they are no threat to you until later on. If you die, you turn into a ghost, and then the game actually gets harder, so technically you don't die. When you die, you get a second chance, but you have to play the game on hard mode from then on out, so it is in your best interest to play at your best when you're on your initial life, because it seems like the game does get a lot harder after you go into ghost mode. I'm gonna blow that up to save me a little bit of time with these purple guys over here. They really should stop holding their breath. That color is not befitting on them. There we are. And owl came straight for me. So the difference between the owls and the bats, the owls dash straight at you after you hit them, whereas the bats are kind of like these passive decorations that are just laying all over the place. These little dirt piles on the ground, if you step on them, they spawn a cursed townsfolk. And so stepping on them is a great way to make your life a lot more difficult if the screen is already crowded. So in general, I try to stay away from those right there. I think that's going to be the exit to the level. So let's go back and make sure that we clear this entire thing out because I do get a good feeling from this 
that we probably want to stockpile all the items we can before we go elsewhere. The spider webs, they slow you down. They just stick to your feet. They get your chucks all dirty. Then you got to go home and you got to scrub them off. Or in case you're wearing something like, for example, I got my Pumas that I'm rocking or my Crevos. Once you get spider webs all over them, you got to go home. You got to use a suede brush on them. It's a giant hassle. Well, it's not a giant hassle. First world problems, I guess. Ooh, a store. Hello. How's it going, Beardy Baldy? Sorry, I can only give discounts to my best customers. Maybe someone in town can help you out. Okay, so apparently we don't get a discount. We aren't awesome enough for that. We can guess that maybe the usefulness of the items is going to be related to how expensive they are, but I'm going to take the armor. The Shaman's Tunic. What does that do for me? Increases the totem duration and is equipped to your chest. Do we have enough to buy the spear? What does it do? We'll buy a spear. We're going to be doing a lot of experimentation. I didn't mean to do that right there, but it just kind of came up. It became obvious as the sentence approached. But with our experimentation, because it's the first time I'm playing through the game, I'm probably going to be buying a lot of items. You may see me, if you're experienced with the game, bypass on an item that's... Oh, it's fast. Well, that's cool. That actually goes out a lot quicker than the sword does. I don't know if that's specifically its power, but we'll go ahead and take a look at our inventory to make sure fast and has good range is equipped to your weapon sheath. So I may bypass if you're experienced with the game. I apologize for the way that your teeth are currently being worn down, but I don't know anything about the game. So I may bypass a good item for a bad item on a ton of occasions. Hopefully throughout our playthrough, I plan on playing this game quite a bit in the future. Okay. I don't know if this actually means anything to me, but I guess I'll go ahead and wipe them all out. Each one is spawning a little ghost when they die. I suppose- I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm trying to come up with something humorous to say right here about spawning a ghost when you die, but I don't know. Is it better to be a zombie or a ghost? I think a ghost would be a little bit better because you get to be ethereal, which means that like if you're planning on haunting children like I would, I would have way too much fun being- Did his kidney just fly out? His kidney totally just flew out. That sucks. I like my kidney. I would prefer for it to stay exactly where it's at. I mean, anytime your kidney is flying out of your body, you can reasonably assume that you've had a rough day. What is this guy doing? He's still coming straight for me. He doesn't appear to be... I've got a ghost inside of me right now. I don't know, but somehow I feel closer to him. I feel like we have a connection at this point. I don't know what that did for me. It doesn't appear to have done much, so I guess we'll head towards the end of the dungeon. Got a couple hundred gold out of it, I think, from wiping out the monsters on it, but... Whether or not it did anything else, I couldn't really tell you. You don't want to touch those little spiky things right there, obviously. Any type of protrusion in a game like this is probably going to cause you a little bit of health loss, and I'd prefer to keep myself as healthy as possible because my guess is that the worst challenges are far, far ahead. Or far, far abreast, whichever one you feel is the more applicable to the situation. Oh, and so Cemetery 1 is complete. Cool. It looks like we have to go through multiple cemeteries, though. It took us four and a half minutes. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we didn't take any damage, which I know for sure is a good thing. There's no ambiguity right there. Unless we're doing some kind of inverse run where we lose all of our health and then try and run the whole thing without getting hit after that. Hard mode, engage! I have no idea how to get in there. My assumption is that these don't push. If I charge against them, it doesn't appear to do anything. Do my totems do anything? No, the totem doesn't affect- our totem looks kind of surprised right now. He's like, oh my god, you summoned me! He appears as though he was not ready for combat. Wait, what is this? Oh, okay, it's a switch for the door. Alright, well, it doesn't help us get in there to take a look at the item, that little skeleton-looking key right there, but... I don't know, since I don't see any obvious way for us to get in there, I guess I'll keep on trucking. Hey, Ginger Merchant, what's up, man? Welcome, buy a blueprint, you'll be able to purchase a new item in Amberfall. Okay, and so our goal right now then, I suppose the blueprints are permanent, so this is probably going to function very much the same way that Rogue Legacy does, where after you find the blueprint, you're going to have that item unlocked from the blacksmith or whatever it is permanently, so that you can buff your future runs. Let's see if we can't get 5,000 gold together, because right now we're a little bit broke, and I do feel like we can probably improve ourselves. Wow, that guy had a ton of health. Do you weigh health like that? I can't tell if you... Oh, there's like wind blowers. Okay, so those on the ground are little fans that are actually disrupting my movement. So I want to be very, very careful about the way that I navigate right now, because if I push myself too close to them, there is the distinct likelihood. What is that? There's like a glowy skull. Either way, let's check out this chest. The Ring of Multi-Strike. Oh, cool, it split our projectiles in half. We got like a Contra thing going on now. Awesome. I don't know what this does at all. Doesn't appear to do... 
It's got little symbols. I wonder if those symbols are the same as what's on the keys. And if you get all the keys or something, you're able to go through that. Something interesting to think about along the way. No, I got blown back through the door. That's unfortunate. Wasting all my own time right now, and it appears to have murdered the music. We seem to have gone musically wanting from here on out. I mean, I don't mind, but it seems to be kind of a weird bug. I suppose that when you stare deep into the devil's butthole, all music and light seems to leave the world. That's the way that I'm going to explain it. I'm going to say that it's metaphorical. It's figurative. What's going on in this room? we got some gravestones. We've got eh, just some ghosts. Just people hanging out, just haunting the place. That's cool. As long as they're not in my dimension, I don't... What are those? I've never seen those before, so I... Oh, God. Okay, so they actually, like, run at me. Oh! Me no likey. Oh! Okay, so luckily that one had, like, a range limitation, so he couldn't quite get at me, but... Still, it's kind of scary having sharp, pointy objects in the color of red coming at you. I mean, crimson projectiles... All things considered, if there's one thing G.I. Joe taught me, it's that anything that shoots a red projectile is the bad guy. We've now got a couple more enemies coming after us. Hopefully we can hit them with our multi-strikes because that does make our life easier. As we get further into the dungeon, I've played this briefly just to learn the controls and familiarize myself with some of the enemies. But I haven't played a lot. And there are going to be like explosive barrels and things. A lot of those gaming cliches that you're used to seeing in games like this, you are going to see a lot of those in the future too. So be aware that there may be hazard. Will that hurt me? Okay, I want to learn things. There may be hazards along the way that you can use to your benefit or also to your detriment if you're not careful. Let me see if... Oh my god, there's so many things shooting at me right now. I may have to use... Oh no, 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 no. You stop that, goblin. I don't want any of that right now. What a rude chapo. Just runs up on you and starts throwing daggers at you. Just like, here, take this! I met a Ren Fair salesman who was like that once. Just like, buy my stuff! And just like flings it in your direction. You're like, whoa, man, that thing is pointy. Be careful. Bad things can happen here. Ooh, treasure chest. Ow! Well, that was a dirty ruse. Ah. Ooh, he was full of treasure, though, so at least he was attacking with his mouthful. Is that polite or is that impolite to attack with your mouthful? Either way, I'll take his gold. There's nothing here that I'm going to complain about. Alright, we're on to cemetery number three. We took 20 damage right there. But luckily there are health refills around. There are pickups that we can be privy to along the way. We're almost, ooh, 10,000 gold. We're hitting those, oh, I almost said quadruple, but no. We are hitting five digits, even better. Free treasure chest in here, although. Eh, I'm inclined to run away now. The Ranger's Tunic, what does that do for me versus the Shaman's Tunic? It increases our speed and is equipped to chest. Okay, so I haven't been using our totem that much, so I may go with the Shaman's Tunic. Looks like it gives us a bit more skill at running around rapidly. And in a game where you're dealing with bullet hells, being able to move around in mobility tend to be a very important skill. Oh my god, that was awesome. This is my new favorite room. We blew up so much stuff that it lagged the screen. I think that's precisely the amount of explosions that you need in a given game. The doors are now open. This room appears to have all kinds of interesting problems. Ooh, hello. Almost got hit with that little purple goo ball or whatever it was. I'm not really sure. Once they start switching the colors on the things that people are firing at, what is that? A werewolf. Okay, I figured he had kind of a little bit of a furry look going on with him, but he's now dead, so... Solves my problem rather nicely. These gents can drop gold, which raises a question for me if you can sit and farm them or if there's some internal game system that's been designed to keep you from just, like, cheating your ass off and sitting here farming gold all day. These look like projectiles go through them, but I can't walk past them. And so they act as a little bit of a bullet buffer, I guess. Or I'm not a bullet buffer, as a human buffer. Or a lizard buffer, a reptilian buffer. There we go. That's the word that I'm looking for. They act as a reptilian buffer that I can fire from behind. So that's kind of nice. Eh. Save me, Totem! Do something, make yourself useful! Instead of riding around in my backpack, just being stiff all the time and... I don't know. Oh, what the hell? Okay, so he's a teleporting werewolf. He's a werewolf with some serious skills. I guess we can't blow up the gravestones. I was hoping that there was, if there was explosives by the gravestones, they would blow up when you hit them, but I guess not. I like the way you gotta come out of the gate swinging in this game a lot of the time. Like, there's no moment to think. You basically just gotta go. That's something that it shares in common with both Rogue Legacy 
and it shares in common with Binding of Isaac, and I think that's a good thing. Sometimes it's nice to play a game where Twitch reflexes come into play. I play a lot of strategy games, so I don't know, but for me, strategy games, I play a lot of slow games, and so it's nice every once in a while to have like your Twitch skills sort of tested to see if you can hack it. Or if you can stab it, I guess, since we're using a sword. Oh, that guy's hiding in the middle of... I, I guess he made himself a little barrier of gravestones. Ingenuity plus one. He's like the village MacGyver, I guess. He managed to keep himself safe until I showed up. The PTSD probably won't go away for quite some time, though. Being chased by... Ow! I just got stabbed in the face with a knife. That sucks. Thanks for saving me. I'll contribute 500 gold to support you in town. Okay, so I guess that for each person that we find, it appears as though they go back to town, and my guess is that they have that little chest in front of them, like that first guy did. And so you can make a quick run through town each time you die, and get yourself some starting gold, and then you can hit up the shop and maybe start with the modifiers on your weapons that you like, rather than the ones that the game gives you, so that you can make it a little bit further. That way, I guess, if you like the default loadout, you can go with that, or if you need a little bit of supplementary help, you can go with that. We've got a helmet and an axe. I'm gonna go with the helmet. What's that going to do for me? Decreases your soul power, increases your maximum health, equipped to your head. Okay, well I don't even know what soul power is right now, because... My assumption is that maybe it has something... Ooh, a gauntlet. The fireproof gloves. Well, I can reasonably guess what that probably does. Yeah, it increases your resistance to fire, and takes up a hand slot. Alright. I wasn't aware that lizards had hands, but you know what? I'm not going to argue with it too much, because it's the game's game, and so... Ooh, oh, that didn't... Wow, the delay on that actually is pretty substantial. Ow. Alright, so being trapped in the corner right now is not going to do it. We need to... put something downfield to keep ourselves alive, and hopefully somebody drops some food or something in the near future, because... Wow, we just took a whole bunch of damage. We're sitting at 20 health right now, although it might work out if I die accordingly, it'll end our episode right on time, but I can break this off too. It's not that massive of a deal. I'm binge recording right now anyways, so... I guess we'll take the northward passage. No, little spiky things in here. Well, maybe we'll find a steak in a crate, or a steak in a barrel. The steak and barrel sounds like a restaurant. Welcome to the steak and barrel. Ow, bastard. Oh no, I always forget that they act in four dimension, or they act on four directions. That's where I get into trouble. So if I go around right there, the doors are now open. Let me see if... Ooh, God. Alright, well, I'm tempting fate right now. God. What is this? The Zombie Warlord. Well, I've got about one health left on me, so I'm not so sure this is going to... Oh, dear. Okay. So, I don't know what else he does, but let's see if maybe we can harm him in some respect. It looks as though he just, like, picks a trajectory. Oh, it gets... Does it get longer and shorter? I don't know. That seems like sort of an offensive thing to ask, but does it get longer or does it get shorter? I mean, are you a grower or a shower? I... Is that what you ask zombie warlords when you first meet them? I feel like this is going in a dark direction. I'm going to try and stay away from him because I don't know the extent to which that thing can grow. And that leaves me in kind of this weird, precarious state where I feel very, very nervous about being near him. I mean, he doesn't appear to be changing up his attack vector at all, so I suppose I'll... Go ahead and just kind of stay away. Oh, it looks like... Oh, it's like a tomato or something. I'm gonna wait till that shrinks down. Hopefully it doesn't despawn an orange. Oh, it gave us 5 health. Okay. I'd rather have 15 health than 10 health. That's one thing I know for sure. Okay, so we killed off the zombie warlord. I think we started off a little bit earlier right there. Oh, the health potion put us back up to 40 health. Okay, and so with 1,000 health... I'm sorry, with 1,000 gold finishing off right there. Let's go up through the door and see what happens when we kill a boss. Oh, you get a golden chest. What does that do for me? It gives me like a... I don't even know what to say about it. It's like an effervescent nitrogen blade or something. I don't know. It looks a lot smokier, and possibly it looks like if you stuck it in your mouth, it would give you kind of a breath mint effect. Interesting. And that takes us to what looks like... 
sewer number one. Okay, so I'm going to break the episode off right here. We'll continue this in just a moment. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Nerd Castle for the first episode of A Wizard's Lizard. I've decided to play this game because it seemed like a lot of fun. I got this game earlier on in its development cycle, but I didn't feel like there was enough content there to really show it off yet. And at this point, the game has actually taken a turn that I have to admit I didn't expect. It's gone very very well throughout the last year of its development so I am impressed and I am happy to show it off here at the Nerd Castle. If you wanted to see it again it'll probably be back tomorrow or the next day. Take care out there everybody and hi do.